All right, it has been... Gosh, it just doesn't stop the start of this year. Yesterday, a major turning point uh, politically for Chris Hipkins and his new Labour government, old new Labour government. And uh, to get some perspective on how big yesterday was and what we really saw, um, we are joined by a guy who I think he's, I think he's just hitting the straps as a political commentator and doing, as, you know, so lucky to have him on the platform. He is the head of the Democracy Project, political lecturer at Victoria, Victoria University, Bryce uh, Edwards, who, as I understand it, Bryce, you've just uh, you had a deadline of 8 o'clock to write a column. Um, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Maureen, uh, Sean, that's yeah. very kind of you. Yeah. Hey, w- wow, yesterday. Um, that was that was a pretty definitive... <laughs> Let's throw out the bad crap that people don't like day what in politics, wasn't it? It really was. It was, as people are calling it, a bonfire of policy. And there's debate about, you know, how significant this was. You know, some of these reforms, people didn't even know about the biofuels things. Hate speech, you know, was pretty much watered down already. But, you know, getting rid of the RNZ, TVNZ merger entirely kicking the social insurance uh, scheme so far down the road, it's not really likely to come back up. These do suggest that Hipkins is a bit more ruthless than some of us had given. Now, he's going to call it a redirection, right? Or a refocus on the bread and butter. I call it, I call it a remarkable political retreat. Yeah, it's a retreat. It's a strategic retreat. Um, This is, you know, these are... I guess, areas on the battlefield where uh, Labour were clearly losing and they were about to you know, lose an election over. So they just got rid of them. And that's that's good politics. It's smart. Um, it, it showed that Hipkins was able to actually get rid of things that were dearly held by his colleagues. You know, these are things that Grant Robertson dearly wanted to, you mm. know, bring in a legacy vanity project of the social insurance thing, but he made him drop it. So, um, yeah. Mm. It, it's and and it further it fuels the narrative that you got onto very quickly after Jacinda Ardern ran out of gas, that that had nothing to do with that. Labor had its focus groups and its polling before Christmas, and they were heading for a, a, an electoral obliteration. Yeah, I mean, are doing going. Chris Hipkins coming in, the the motion of people like um, Andrew Little and Nanaima Mahuta, this new policy reset, they are heavily pragmatic. You know, this is because. Labour was heading for an historic <laughs> landslide loss and they are quickly having to um, do the things that they know have been hurting them, mm. you know, um, mm. and get rid of these things. Yeah. So, you know, regardless of whether, you know, it's heartfelt and yeah. whether Hipkins really believes in, you know, getting rid of the yeah. TVNZ merger, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They just saw that these things were bad yeah. politics. And, and look, I noticed yesterday, and we made a big thing of it, the remarkable report from the Human Rights Commission calling for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in New Zealand and going with this race-critical theory view that Maori never ceded sovereignty. Um, and I see Chris Hipkins came out yesterday and said no way and basically slapped down the Human Rights Commission. That tells me also that he knows the perception of wokeism around Labour is not winning him or is something he has got to disavow in order to reconnect with middle New Zealand? Look, this is the, the big issue. The, this, this word woke, this idea of Labour being about focused on social engineering, on kind of middle class liberal concerns, that's the one that, um, that Atkins really has to ditch. And so there's no way he's going to align himself with the Human Rights Commission and their agenda. There's no way he's going to allow the kind of more of, yeah, middle class activists and Labour's base to, you know, set the agenda for the next six months. Uh, You know, it's going to be more about minimum wage increases. It's going to be about cost of living. Which is the sock to the blue collar worker or to the struggle, uh, you know, the traditional Labour voter in Struggle Street. He's throwing a little bit of lolly at them, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely, and and rightly so. I mean, you know, with the cost of living 
uh, you know, be, or inflation being 7%, um, you know, this minimum wage increase of 7% is entirely yeah. justified. Yeah. And um, in fact, it's, you know, it's, it's not even the, a major big sop. It just means that those on minimum wage get to stay where they are. Not, not living quite so bad of poverty. Yeah. Um, uh, Bryce, but we all know, you know, there is still one policy that has not been rolled back. Um, maybe oh. they're looking at three waters, but that really is, that's the Mount Everest of turning, that's the big iceberg that Labor yeah. has to avoid. And I would say that the fact that they weren't more definitive today, there is still a tension existing, and maybe Willie Jackson said you can have your TVNZ, RNZ merger, but no way we're giving away co-governance in three waters. Yeah, and no, I think I think that's that's probably wrong. I just okay. think if yeah, I, I mean it's a complicated area. The three waters, uh, you know, they've passed some of the legislation. It's this big complex um, you know, monster of a, of reforms. They have to work out exactly how they take the scalper to it, um, or they ditch the whole thing, or what. You know? Do you and think they I, are committed, and they have a mandate from the Labor Party caucus to stop it? Because I'm saying that's yeah. they're in for a penny now. They must will be in for a pound. Oh look, I will be I'll be really quite shocked if there isn't a significant um, change to Three Waters now. Um, no, they've built up. Hopkins has built up the momentum and the authority for making big changes. Yeah, the whole narrative now is about co-governance has to go or at least be significantly watered down yeah. from it. And anything less than that, uh, and Chris Hipkins may as well, you know... And not and have done all the stuff he did yesterday because that's the exactly. big elephant. That's the big policy elephant in the room. That's the one that yep. people are focused on and all the polls show that's the single issue that is getting people pissed off with Labour, isn't it? Yes, and, yeah. and he's going to reserve uh, uh, an announcement... Uh, that just focuses on three waters for the future. Um, so, yeah, yeah. it's um, it, why not announce that separately after you've yeah. really got it sorted out and you're not looking like you're just panicking, but you've actually come up with a proper way of, of fixing that problem. Yeah. Look, uh, nice to have you on this morning, Bryce, because also it is a year, well, it was a year yesterday that the parliamentary protest started. And I've done a little Twitter poll of people and it's had quite a good result. You know, where, do you, a year on, if you took part, are you proud, ashamed or still confused? Most people proud. And if we look at the political landscape today compared with a year ago, man has a lot changed. And I would say on balance, they may have been a river of filth. They may have been chaotic. They may have been poorly organised. But that protest is part of the change we saw yesterday from Chris Hipkins. Oh, absolutely. I mean, last year was just a disaster of a year for the Labour government, especially in terms of public support just slowly going downwards. And uh, that, that protest, I think, did have a big impact on, on that uh, people just questioning whether Labour had got things right. And um, and of course we saw that it wasn't soon. It wasn't long after that protest that um, Ardern actually started to get rid of some of the things that that protest was demanding. Got rid of. So yeah, it did have a big impact. And Ardern said at the end of the year that was the most challenging single issue for her government. Um, and so I don't know. They, there still hasn't really been enough debate on the significance of that that protest and what it really meant. Um, you know, there has been about the Springbok tour, there has been about lots of other big events, but this is one that, I don't know, we just don't seem to be capable of having Yet. a... A little more water under the bridge, Bryce. Um, emotions are still, are still running high on it. Hey, do you think, do you think without a change on Three Waters... The policy changes, or the bonfire, as it's been called, announced yesterday, is enough to seriously get Labor back in the race. Oh, look, they're already back in the race. Hipkins becoming Prime Minister pushed Labor ahead of National in those polls for the first time. Mm. And, um, you know, yes, that's to be expected, because often Prime Ministers get a big honeymoon bump like that. But he's taking that momentum, and he's, um, he's moving forward. He hasn't doesn't really look like he's done anything wrong since he's taken over. So, 
it looks bold and voters like boldness voters like you know yeah. politicians and i don't think ardern was being very bold she was all kind of um i don't know she, just oh, she was out of gas price things. and we were all us yes. guys were being mean to her Oh. Yes, <laughs> but um, but Hipkins, you know, he looks like he's got a full tank of gas. Yep. He looks like he's stamping his authority on things. And voters will, I think, respond very positively to that. Mm. And if he keeps up that momentum, it gives him authority and, you know, okay, and, it's game on. and it's game on to stand up. And, I mean, we haven't really heard much about what happened at Waitangi behind the closed doors when Hipkins met up with the Iwi Chair Forum. Mm. But um, it was interesting. There were a couple of reports that came out. Richard Harmond, um, and I think there was another reporter, got some sort of gossip uh, and, uh, about what came out. And it, the reports were that Hipkins stood up to the Iwi leaders and said, no, I am watering down three waters and I'm watering down co-governance and I'm not countenancing your objections to that. And wow. he said to them, apparently, and he got Willie Jackson to stand up and say, look, you can either go against us or you can... Um, well, he if you're that, not with us, you are against to, us. You, well, essentially, and he said, yeah. if you're against us, you will be bringing about a national act government, which will do even more. Well, you see, I think some people are going to back. argue you're against us. You're bringing a, around a government that has the Maori Party holding the balance of power. Well, that might be well, true as well. But the point is, he stood up to them, and apparently him and Jackson. And then after that interview, yeah. uh, sorry, after that episode, Willie Jackson, who's a really interesting character, um, he did an interview with Joe Moore from Newsroom. Yes. Yeah. He started saying, look, I don't care what the Iwi leaders think. Yeah. They're not the or an end all of well, Murray, I'll okay. be honest, um, Willie's on a promise yeah. to appear with us next week. Um, oh, yep. He's an interesting Yeah, and, and I think he plays a pivotal role in this, and he's a pragmatic politician. Yeah. Mm. So, And he's someone that can connect Labor with Murray working class supporters in the way that the likes of Murray do. And, and there's can't. a difference between that, isn't there, and the Maori elite. And the Iwi oh, absolutely. And, and a few people realise that. And so people talk about Murray and as just, you know, this monolith. And that, you know, when and people like not. Mahuta talk about my, my people and what yep. we think, yep. it's a lot of rubbish because, yeah. you know, they're, they're very much in different social bases. And there's yeah. a, you know, the vast majority of Murray are working class people who don't really care about co governance yeah. and treaty settlements and iwi. They care about cost of living. And Which is something wage. that Shane Jones understood when he appeared on the program uh, with me on Tuesday after Waitangi yeah. weekend. Yeah. And he, was, he yep. was singing a popular song. Hey, Bryce, always good talking to you. Don't we live in interesting times? And isn't it fantastic? Oh, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, mate. Talk Look, soon. Okay. That is Bryce Edwards. He is the head of the uh, Democracy Project, political lecturer at Victoria University. And I, look, I like Bryce's take. Um, Bryce used to be perceived as a lefty. Then they, all the wokesters said, oh, he's not really one of us. He's not. He's not woke enough. Um, but I like him. I, I think his perspectives are good. Um, I hear Bryce talking Hipkins up enthusiastically. I don't share the same vision, but then I'm not a shill for the Labour Party. Look, I, I've got no doubt, and you can assess everyone we have on the programme when we try and get a, a wide variety of views. Bryce maybe leans a little lefty. Okay, what's wrong with that? We other people who, who lean righty? Up, be downy, inny and outy, I don't care. You'll get a run if you want to come on the platform.